No problem. What's going on, folks? TJ Lowerman, aka That Sports Gamer, here, community manager for Out of the Park Baseball and MLB Manager. Uh, on tonight's stream, I am joined by the inimitable, I don't know what that word means, uh, writer from fangraphs.com, Paul Sporer. That's How's it saying. going, TJ? I'm uh, very happy to finally speak to you in real life. It's nice. It's nice. Um, I'm really excited to talk some OTP. Amazing game. You know I'm a huge baseball nerd. I mean, it, honestly, it couldn't be a better game for a baseball nerd. Definitely. Definitely correct. Uh, I brought you on tonight because it is spring training opening night. Some teams have already uh, gotten out to the practice fields. I don't know if you saw, like, last week, the Mets were already warming up. Their pitchers yeah. got there real early, which uh, is good because they're all on innings limits. So why don't we just start them throwing a week extra? Early? <laughs> yeah, why don't, why don't we just get them in there using hundreds of pitches right now? Uh, no, they'll be all right, though. That's that's just kind of the nature of the game today. Guys report earlier and earlier every year, it seems. It's kind of that sports culture now where it's 24-7 the sport that you're in. Yeah, the off season just gets shorter and shorter, and they just keep going now. Uh, so the main – go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I, I can't wait. Pitcher, pitchers and catchers will be reporting soon, uh, uh, league-wide, and it's just going to be great. It's just going to be great. Uh, yeah, so with spring training here, uh, the reason I brought you on, and I'm sure I will bring you on other times uh, throughout the year, uh, we wanted to talk about some guys going into spring training that might not be the big name guys, uh, but have a chance to have a good spring training and make an impact with their team this year. Sounds good? Absolutely. I think we got five really interesting guys, kind of ranging from, from young prospects on the rise to some, uh, some retreads, which is what these non-roster guys are. Obviously, if they were... You know, good enough to be on the 25-man roster, they wouldn't really fit into this discussion. So there's some off-the-radar guys for sure. All right, so I have opened up. Uh, I have the save. There was a September 1st save from last year for Out of the Park Baseball. So I've loaded it up, and uh, let's take a look at your first guy that you want to talk about. All right, well, what order are we going in? You'll have to tell me. Are you going you directly in the order that I gave them to you? Okay. It's all up to you. Well, let's, let's start with Travis Snyder from, from Kansas City. This is a name that, that folks might actually recognize. Uh, he's been knocking around for a while, several different teams. He was a hot prospect at one point. Didn't really work. He's shown flashes here and there. Uh, 14 home runs in 2010. 13 home runs just in 2014 with Pittsburgh. But he's never really been able to put it together with enough consistency. So why now? Well, he is still just 28, which is you know technically in the midst of his prime. But a big reason that he was able to make the cut here uh, for my list is not only am I looking for guys that are intriguing, I'm looking for opportunity as well because you you wanted guys that could make an impact. Well, the outfield in Kansas City has got two excellent pieces, so we, we kind of think of it as a complete product with Lorenzo Cain and Alex Gordon in center and left, respectively. But right field is kind of open right now, and uh, Gerard Dyson is currently listed there uh, as the starter in a platoon with Paolo Orlando. And Orlando did pretty well last year here and there, hitting some triples, blah, blah, blah. And Dyson is the speedy defender, but he's a fourth outfielder type. This is a perfect opportunity for Snyder if he can finally get some things going. Who knows if he can? Again, the minor league numbers have been there. The major league numbers have not. But I think that Travis Snyder is somebody who could latch on. It wouldn't be that surprising to make the team and then actually get into that right field spot on a regular basis. All right, and in out of the park on this roster, we have him at ten con at, on a one to twenty scale. He's at ten contact, eleven gap power, nine home run power, uh, ten discipline, and eight avoid K's. And See, and that's fifteen. You know, those stealing. are all. Which is, he he does have pretty good speed. He's really athletic. He's a good outfielder. I'm sure his arm is rated pretty high. I actually see it now. He's at, he's rated with a fourteen arm. That's a good player right there. I mean, it's not a stud. I see that his overall ratings give him one star. But all those uh, ratings are supposed to add up to a good player in real life. So he has been a disappointment. Bill James has always said, if you're average everywhere, you're really good. Now, he means that more for a team, but it also works on the individual level. If everything on your profile is just about average, obviously his bunting is very low, but who cares? But everything else is average or better, and yet he's a below average player. So it, it, it's a mystery, and it, some guys just don't click for any number of reasons. We'll see if Snyder can turn it around, but I definitely think in terms of non-roster invitees, he has a great shot. Excellent. Thank you, Paul. Who do you want to go with next? 
Let's move. Let's go on uh, to the other side here and go with a prospect. Let's go with A.J. Reed in Houston, a first base prospect, which in itself is a bit of a rare bird. Usually a uh, first base prospect is, is an oxymoron. It doesn't really exist because usually guys are coming from different positions and they wind up at first base, whether, whether they're at third base, corner outfield somewhere. Uh, those are the usual positions. Or catcher, of course, if they, they no longer work there. But Reed is a true uh, first baseman through and through and, and has made himself into a prospect. Really impressive hitter. This doesn't play as much for uh, – his major league career or even OOTP, I bet, but he was actually a great pitcher, uh, in, at Kentucky in the, in college, which was interesting. And, and he had a chance to maybe get drafted as a, as a pitcher actually went ahead and went with, with hitting and he's been tearing it up. He had a monster 2015 season. Now, part of that was in high a at Lancaster for the, uh, California league. Don't get too crazy on those numbers. That place really inflates numbers. So you got to take them with a grain of salt, kind of like a Coors Field effect. But he got promoted to double A, had 53 more games there, and continued to rake. A.J. Reed, again, not only has the skills himself, but also a chance at an opening. First base in Houston is not locked down by any measure. John Singleton is there. He's a prospect. He's been paid some money, but he's been a major disappointment. So everything's opened up for Reed to get a shot this year. Is my man Chris Carter still down there? No, no. He got he shifted up to Milwaukee. Oh. He basically took the place of Adam Lind, uh, who shifted over to Seattle. So there's been kind of a musical chairs on first base, but nobody wound up really in Houston outside of Singleton and now Reed. So it's a wide open race, I think, between those two because Singleton has been so miserable in a couple of opportunities. Uh, yeah. Uh, in Out of the Park, you can see his infield arm is a 16. Maybe some of that strength is coming from uh, being a pitcher. I'd say so. I'd say so. Uh, Currently, we have him at seven contact, but with a 12 potential, uh, 11 gap power, 14 potential, 10 home run power, 15 potential. Pretty good player. We got him at one star and three and a half potential. I like him. Um, I'm actually going to go with one of the comments here. Try hard gaming uh, FTW2. I agree with him. Why don't? Why aren't we using the 2080 scale? That's that's the scale. That's to go with. In out of the park baseball, you have many, many options. That's true. Of how you want to you do have this. options. Uh, you I have just options. went with the default uh, one to twenty on this. Maybe next stream we'll do twenty to eighty. Yeah, the the, the one to twenty still works. I just wanted to give you a little hell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So he looks like a real good prospect. Let's jump over to pitching then, and, and keep going with prospects. Though the the pitching prospect that I chose was Sean Manaya from Oakland. Uh, I'm not gonna know how to spell that. I had it spelled M A N A. E-A, yeah, it is pretty interestingly confusing. M-A-N-A. N-A-E-A. Just put a letter and then an A, and you'll probably get there. Gotcha. He played for the Round Rock Express. Midland Round Rocks, never mind. Round Hounds. Mid- Midland Rock, Rock Hounds. Hounds. Ugh, there's too many teams. This guy <laughs> You is just way put big. <laughs> This guy has way big upside, so... <laughs> Okay, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, he, he, he is. He's a monster prospect. He came over from the Kansas City organization in the Ben Zobras deal. So he was kind of the big the big get for Oakland there. He's only been in double A. So he's kind of a long shot to, to break camp with the club. But there's a chance because he was a college product, and the only thing that's kind of held Manaya back a little bit is the fact that uh, injuries have, have plagued him a little bit. In fact, they pushed down his draft stock in 2013 when he was drafted. There was a chance for him to go in like the top 10, and uh, he had some issues at Indiana State in that final year, got pushed down to pick 34, still first round. But uh, he's been kind of working his way up since then. Again, ran into a little bit of injury issue this year, throwing only 74 innings. But the dude is a stud. Left-hander. He's got the power stuff, 6'5", 235, uh, 235 pounds. I mean, everything is there for this guy. He's somebody – plus Oakland thinks that they're competing this year. So he's somebody that if he goes into spring training and just dominates, they could put him right in the rotation. They, they don't have all five spots 100% locked down. He bulked up a little bit, huh? Because in for this roster, we have him at two fifteen. Yeah, he 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 probably entered the league at two fifteen, but the last couple of years he's put on some weight, filled out, added a couple ticks of velocity as well. He he's a stud in the making if he can stay healthy. I know that's something that is said of a lot of pitchers if they can stay healthy, but I I truly believe it of Manaya as well. Uh, we have him at ten stuff with a fourteen potential, twelve movement with fourteen potential. Uh, Control is a little bit of a question. Yep, seven and ten. 
Uh, and we have him with uh, fastball, slider, change, all 13 or 12 with 16 potential for all of them. That's that definitely quality fit. pitcher. Yeah, that, that, that's a good profile right there, uh, right down to the control being kind of the issue that he's working on. Trim the walk rate last year. It was at four, four walks per nine in 2014, and he got it down to 3.1 this past season. So big improvement there, and that's part of the reason that I put him on this list because now he's going to be 24 coming into this season. That's an age where you can kind of skip AAA if you show enough in spring training. So it, it – He's probably one of the least likely of this group to really break camp because Oakland is pretty stingy with their money, and you save money by sending the guy down for a couple weeks. But uh, because they consider themselves competing, if Kendall Graveman or somebody doesn't doesn't you know pass muster with them, they'll they'll go to Manaya. Excellent. So he'll be like the the late May pickup or, or the early yeah. May call up. He, he that's probably the best bet for him. You know he's a baseball rat, and he lo- he's the first one at the park every day, and the last one to leave. I, I, lo- I love that about him. I've heard about it. The last guy was a botanist. I don't know if you know. He was. Yeah, little known story. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you. Uh, all right, we got two more guys. We got uh, two two veteran-ish type guys. Let's go with Corey Lubke on Pittsburgh. I'll spell that one for you too, because I know you can't spell that one. L U E. So close. I missed that E. B K E. Yeah, it, that's the one that gets everybody. Yeah. 30 years old, but quality stuff. I got 12s and 13s for everything. The biggest issue with him has been uh, a nightmarish injury profile. He he was pitching with San Diego, pitching really well, fell down to Tommy John surgery, and has not been able to get back since. He hasn't pitched in the majors since 2012. So it's been a long time. The injuries have been the biggest issue, but now he's with Pittsburgh – They've been pitching wizards lately. I mean, they've been turning guys that we thought were nothing into greatness. So somebody who actually has some talent, if he's anywhere near healthy, uh, then I think Lubke can can become something for Pittsburgh. It might only be in the bullpen to start the season, but you look at Ryan Vogelsong and Jeff Locke at the back end of their rotation, and they do not have spots guaranteed. So I could see Lubke really uh, stepping up. And again, at age 30, there's no reason to kind of you know, baby him at all. He's right. Re- if he's ready to go and healthy, then he's going to be a stud. Yeah, and Pittsburgh's really getting that reputation, kind of like the Cardinals had a few years ago, where they take these guys off the scrap heap and they're turning them into quality MLB pitchers. I thought Absolutely. AJ Burnett was done. Everyone did. I thought Francisco I- Liriano after the Twins was probably yep. done. Edinson Volquez. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and by the way. B- with that in mind, it almost makes me think that maybe Ryan Vogelsong might have something left because of how they keep doing this with guys. But yeah, Lubke's another one. And part of it is, uh, you know, the ballpark helps, but also just kind of the the catchers that they get are really good at calling games and framing, and they also have excellent defense. So th- everything sets up for a pitcher to have success there, and it's no surprise that they've been so good with it. Imagine what they are able to do with guys who actually have a lot of talent already when they're building up these guys who are kind of on their last leg too. So that's why I think Garrett Cole is going to be a total super ace, by the way, Uh, just kind of shifting gears there for a second. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Who's this last guy we want to talk about? All right. Last guy, Robbie Grossman, G R O S S M A N. That one's an easy one. That's easy. He's going to be playing out in Cleveland. And this is another one that, you know, the player I'm not really obsessed with, but the, the opportunity is there. Robbie Grossman is he's a fourth outfielder in the major leagues. Like he, that, there's no reason that he should have spent all of uh last year in the minors pretty much except that Houston just didn't need him. And and when he was up with them he didn't do enough so they kind of let him go. But Cleveland for some reason I cannot fathom why they haven't asked Dexter Fowler how much money he wants and just given him whatever he wants because they need outfield help. They've got Rajay Davis Abraham Almonte and Lonnie Chisenhall. And I'm sure several people watching and listening don't know at least one of those guys, if not all three of them. Yeah, and right. that's going to give Grossman a chance to do some damage. He's going to be 26. He's kind of the, the a do-everything type. A little bit of pop, nothing major, but speed and defense is his game. So if he can, if he can catch fire uh, in spring training you know, and, and just hit the ball a bunch, I think he has a really good chance of getting a roll. Yeah, we've got him at 13 speed, 13 range, 8 and 10 for the contact and gap power, 6 for home run power, but with 11 potential, that's not bad. Uh, 11 eye discipline, 14 on the potential for that. Seems like he could make an impact right here. 
He yeah. really could. But by the way, let me address a, a comment in there from Rockies fan forever. Chisholm Hall definitely has played the outfield. If anybody would know, Paul Sporer would know. Precisely. Paul, tell me about your great podcast that you're on. I'm on. Well, I'm actually on two. I kind of talk about both of them, but the one that you're talking about is the the sleeper in the bust at Fangraphs that I do uh, three times a week, twice with Eno Saris, once with Jason Collette. Um, it's just a podcast with, with with my buddies. Basically, we're talking baseball. We're talking fantasy. I've known Jason now since 2003. Uh, you know, it's like one of those situations where, you know. You meet a guy on the the internet, like he, he's like my internet friend, and then he actually became my my real friend. Uh, and I'm just he was one of my best friends in the world. Uh, Eno and I met in Arizona a handful of years ago. He brought me on at Fangraphs, and he and I have become great friends. So it's just two buddies talking baseball. I mean, I, we've gotten a couple reviews lately in iTunes that said I don't even play fantasy, but the way they talk about baseball it keeps me interested. You know, I, I learn stuff from that. So listen. If you like baseball at all, I think our podcast works for you. They call that Sleeper and the Bust. It's at fangraphs.com slash fantasy. And uh, I really think that you guys should listen. The other one I do is uh, the Rotowire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. I contribute to that twice a week, once with Derek Van Riper and once with Todd Zola. Those are my dudes as well. I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of a jack of all trades or Swiss Army knife kind of guy. I'm, I'm at a different couple different websites as a freelancer, but Fangraphs is my is my primary home right now. Uh, Sully on tap wants to know: Do you win every league you're in? Uh, no, no. Uh, just like every you know uh, professional poker player doesn't win every tournament or uh, obviously every hand that he's in. I can be beaten. That, there's there's no doubt about it. I, I can definitely be beaten. But uh, over the course of time, you know, playing in a league for several years. I'll put myself up against anybody that, that I feel like I can hang uh, over the course of time. In any given year, though, you know, injuries can get you. Uh, bad luck can get you. Also, bad drafts can, too. I'm, I'm not above having just a bad draft. But I do think I am very good at fantasy baseball, yes. Uh, you would be – we can say your specialty is starting pitching, correct? I think we could because the other thing that I do – and that uh, if, if anyone has any you know knowledge of me, it might be via the starting pitcher guide, which isn't out for 2016 yet, but it is uh, at the spguide.com if you kind of want to follow when that will be coming out. I've been doing that now since 2008, I believe, and that's basically just a uh, – it's recently turned into a book the last four or five years. It's a PDF covering at least 300 pitchers. I think the highest we've ever gone was like 428 pitchers. This year it'll be around 280, 300. And it just kind of deep dives uh, all the pitchers that I expect to contribute this year as well as hits on some of the prospects in every organization. So it is a fantasy tool that uh, if you're going to play season-long fantasy or DraftKings, FanDuel stuff, it will definitely help you for that. But again, I would also say that it has general baseball usage as well because if you're just following your favorite team all year and they bring up some guy that you never heard of in the middle of the season you can go reference the guide and and kind of get a little rundown about him and say oh okay sean Manaya. i heard i heard that dork talk about him on tj's show and uh and then i'll have a write-up in there about the pitches that he throws and things like that so the spguide.com it'll be available by the end of this month hopefully god i'm i'm working on it so hard right now so um yeah It'll be out later this month. Yeah, that's that's why I love listening to the Fantasy Baseball Podcast because you hear about so many players that – the guys you're not going to hear about just watching ESPN or watching Baseball Tonight. Or maybe if you watch Baseball Tonight, some of those guys are kind of smart. But you're not going to hear them in everyday conversation like the Robbie Grossmans of the world. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we definitely go deep. We try to we try to cover everything. You know, we people want to hear about the star players for sure, but they also want to hear about the guys in the, kind of the middle and back end of fantasy drafts because honestly, that's where they're won. You know, what if one of these guys that we just gave these five guys that we talked about, if one of them pops and and kind of has a big season, that's huge. You know, uh, especially if it's the one that somebody listening to this drafted. I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest you go out and draft all five of these guys. The only one that I would actually draft in a 12 team mixed league right now is Reed, AJ Reed from Houston. The other four I would just kind of keep on my watch list, but uh, th- that's where leagues are won is finding the guys that nobody is on and getting getting on board before they start dominating. AJ Reed. Reed. Note has been taken. I will be drafting him in my 12 team mixer. Let me answer this question here from Fighting Chunk about uh, about Josh Tomlin. I'm uh, 
it's great that he won you your league last year, and that's only because the season ran out on him. You know, the, the, the clock expired before regression could catch up to him because Josh Tomlin is not as good as those numbers. Now, he was on a hot run, and I'm glad that it helped you, but I would not go back to that well again this year. I would say utilize what you got, enjoy your championship, thank Josh Tomlin, and then move on. The dude just gives up way too many home runs to be successful. He was able to get a 302 ERA and a .84 whip last year, because he was unhittable he had a he had a tiny batting average on balls in play and in a short sample like 66 innings a lot of times that is just good luck he was just running hot he was pitching well too i got to give him credit but the fact is when more traffic gets on the bases and he's allowing two home runs per nine innings that era is going to go up by a full run so i i would i'll eat my hat if josh tomlin has an era under four on this very show next year i, I will eat a hat uh, yeah, the, the Indians have a very interesting rotation. They really do. A lot of characters, it, it, a lot of quality players, and you never know. Corey Kluber can go off again and not lose 16. He could go and win 16 next year, and anything's possible. They've got, they've got three guys who can legitimately contend for the American League Cy Young Award with Corey Kluber, Carlos Carrasco, and Danny Salazar. All three of them, nobody would be surprised if they had that kind of 220 inning season of excellence. Obviously, Kluber already has one. Carrasco was great last year. So was Salazar. Trevor Bauer is an interesting guy. He's really got to figure out how to put it together. He can't find the strike zone consistently enough. And even Tomlin, as a number five starter, is is perfectly cromulent. The problem is, for fantasy purposes, I don't think he's nearly as good as he is in, in real life. And there's always those distinctions with guys that are better real life players than they are fantasy. Josh Tomlin can get you major league innings when he's healthy. And that has use. But uh, overall, I, I'm just not a fan of his. All right. I am going to load up this stream. Uh, yeah, so in Out of the Park 16, uh, you can do a new quick start game. And there are pre-configured all-time lineups in there. So dope. So I know I sent you who was on the team before. But let me pull it up. I've scheduled this July 29th game between the all-time White Sox and all-time Tigers, hence why I'm wearing the Tigers hat today. You know, I hope that, that Joe Creedy isn't on this all-time White Sox team because he murders the Tigers. Let me tell you about the White Sox. I was doing – I was just playing around, doing a, a resim of 1994. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank Thomas ended up winning the Triple Crown with 64 home runs, hitting like 380. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he was a monster. That's uh, unbelievable. Detroit Tigers. Detroit what? Uh, there was a reason I was coming over here. I need to go to their schedule. That's why. Let me pull up the game. Well, we have three options of uh, pitching matchups. Uh, we'll just go through the lineup. We don't have. You don't have to stick around for the game if you don't want to. You're more than welcome to if you do. And then we I'll can... certainly stick around for at least a little bit. I want to see some of this. And then we can talk about... Uh, the madness that I did today in MLB Manager. Uh, do you want to see Eddie Seacoat versus Justin Verlander? Uh, yeah, it's. I believe it's Sakati. Mm. I might have that run wrong though. I don't know. I believe I've watched uh, Eight Men Out enough to know. Okay. Uh, where are these guys? What did you call him? Seacoat. It's. We, we, how about we're we're blend both of ours? It's Seacot. Maybe it's Seacott. I'll allow that. Uh, yeah, my, Red, mine was mine was wrong. How about uh, Red Faber versus Hal Newhouser? Hal Newhouser was was a monster. Or Doc White versus Jim Bunning. Mm. I think we're going Verlander. Seacott. Yeah, I think we, I think we got to do that. Played by I don't know his name. Great actor. Uh, tried to take down Jason Bourne. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who who did play him? Is it Was it David Strathern? Uh, that sounds right. I know it's a hard last name to uh, uh, pronounce for sure. I'm going to look it up. Easier to look up Eddie Seacott and find out who played him in... That's 100% true. Did you find it? Kennesaw Mountain Landis, I believe his name. That's the That was the commissioner of baseball. Dave... Yeah, that guy that you said. Say it. Uh, Jason, Straith Aaron. Jason Statham, I believe his name is. <laughs> Straith Heron. Straith Heron. Straith Heron. Yeah, Straith Heron. Stra Theron. Stra Theron. Not Straith Heron. 
Strathairn. Also Strathairn. played by Strathairn. Nick Easton in Field of Dreams. Interesting. Um, here's a interesting tidbit as well. I've never seen that movie. Field of Dreams which, or Eight Men Out? Uh, Field of Dreams, which I know is, is kind of bananas for somebody who's as obsessed with baseball as I am. Oh, it's the guy that throws at uh, the kid. You've, oh, you haven't seen Field of Dreams. Well, no. God, <laughs> it's the guy that throws at uh, Moonlight Graham. He threw at a kid? Yeah. That's rude. The kid comes up and he, uh, I believe he winks at him. <laughs> and then drills him? Yeah, drills him. It's great. Uh, let's go into this game. What well, Verlander we... better step up in this game. We've had some interesting games in the stream recently. I think uh, Cy Young got blown out by the Yankees. Uh, I think Tom Glavin, or no, Greg, I think Tom Glavin threw a gem. All right, so, assuming the computer doesn't do this, uh, do this wrong. Uh, the lineups will be Eddie Collins Jr., Luke Appling, Shoeless Joe Jackson, oh. Paul Canerco, Maglio Ordonez, who I did not realize the depth of the failed A-Rod trade. Uh, with oh, yeah. Where Maglio uh, was going to get traded for no more. Yeah. And Manny was going to go to Texas. By the way, Maglio could have made could have made our team as well. Could have made the all-time Tigers team. He was a beast for that Tigers team and really helped them kind of turn things around. Maglio Ordonez and Pudge Rodriguez being signed were the uh, – and I think it was Pudge first, then Maglio were, – were the game changers that, that really turned the organization around um, – and yeah, it, wa it wasn't a super long career. He was definitely better with Chicago. That's where, where he made his name. But he kicked butt for Detroit. Had an 849 OPS. He had that one year where he hit 363 and lost the uh, lost the uh, MVP to A Rod. Uh, speaking of butt kicking, uh, next up for them is Robin Ventura playing third base, who oh boy famously got his butt kicked. I actually have uh, my wife got me for Christmas a picture of bloody Nolan Ryan. Oh my uh, God. for my wall, but it is from I believe when. Bo Jackson hit one back off his face, not from yes. the fight. <laughs> so I need to get the matching one with the fight to go next to it. That would be perfect. Uh, the DH, Zeke Bonora. See, I don't even know who the hell that is. I don't know. Uh, Mini Minosa in left. I know him. Is, uh, see, here's, here's the catch with these rosters. I think players can only be on one team. Okay. Because if I told you who, I mean, you're probably watching the stream, who would you say is the White Sox catcher? I mean, Fisk, but it's not, right? He's probably the Red Sox catcher is what I'm assuming. I'm pretty positive he is. Uh, so. You mean Red Sox catcher? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. The other Sox. Uh, so here it's AJ Pruszynski. <laughs> That's interesting. They must not really have much else behind the dish in their career because, I mean, he was fine for them, but he certainly wasn't like all time. Mm -hmm. I'm looking right now. His OPS plus, for those that don't know that stat, 100 is average, and his was 93 with them. So he wasn't even an above average uh, catcher with his OPS. You know what he had though? Heart and hustle. Can't put a number he on that. Did, he, he did, and he put and uh, the volume. You know, being there to play every single day is a big deal at catcher as well. And so he put in the 500 plate appearances, the 130 games every single season. Team leader. Did he start a fight with the White Sox, or did he hold the White Sox back? Didn't he punch Michael Barrett or something? So, yeah, where was that? Michael big Barrett. Fight? Michael Barrett punched him. Was that when he was on the White Sox and Barrett was on the Cubs? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, what are we going with? Seacoat or Seacot? Seacot. All right. The body of water and what you sleep on. All right. Uh, then for the Tigers, we have Ty Cobb, obviously, as portrayed by uh, – who's the drummer for Motley Crue? Uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee. There we go. Uh, Charlie Geringer playing second base. Beast. Uh, I don't know. Sweet Lee Whitaker, maybe my choice. I don't know. Uh, yeah, he would be my he would be my choice. But th they have two. I mean, th both of them really belong on the team, and I, I know Lee Whitaker is on the team. He's just not starting. Uh, Hank Greenberg at first, Norm Cash at the DH spot, Harry Heilman in right, Travis Fryman at short, uh, Tony Phillips. Wait, over Trammell? Uh, Trammell? I thought I saw Trammell somewhere. Hmm. 
I mean, he's on the team. He's just not starting. Maybe he's. Uh, maybe he's. Maybe he's getting uh, a day off. Maybe yeah, yeah. Maybe because you're in the midst of the season, right? Facing a tough righty. We give him the day off. Uh, yeah. Can I see his stats? Fifty-six games. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Uh... Hmm. I don't know. Tony Phillips in left. Daryl Evans at third. Bill Freehan catching. I have a lot of questions about the Tigers lineup. Right. Just it must be. Right. It must be off days. Because who was I just thinking? Where's uh, where's Prince's dad? But I mean, maybe Cecil. Him. Cecil. Yeah. I mean, Cash and Greenberg are pretty good at, at first base DH, mm-hmm. but Trammell got to be at short, and then you can move Fryman over to third. You know, Daryl Evans was pretty good. But, uh, you know, I've got no no qualms with him being on the team. But this is not the premier lineup. We're still going to smoke Seacott. No big deal. I don't know. Well, you never know. If he was paid off, That's, things could happen. I've paid him off to make the Tigers look good during this stream. Uh, just, I just want to make sure the game's not too loud. Which it probably is, but... Uh, oh, so good. No, I have it down a little bit. Okay. Uh, did anything change, Fryman? Heilman, Cash. No, everything looks good. That's a that's Tigers got a really good defensive line. Maybe that's maybe that dictated their uh, their decisions there because I didn't realize Evans was so good at third. Seventeen. Seventeen defense. defense. Strong. You know what? This this is good. That means I can, you can uh, see some quality on this uh, stream that you can read his defense. Oh yeah, it looks great. Eddie Collins versus Verlander. Started off. Uh, yeah, so I've been trying to just keep up with live play-by-play and just reading that. That's becoming more and more of a nightmare every time I try to do it. Uh, so, I mean, we can just kind of see what happens. Yeah, so today I was uh, playing around MLB Manager, and I just simmed to three 2016 just to get to this okay. off season. Yeah. And I was like, my big plan with Out of the Park 17, uh, I'm going to take the Braves. We're winning the World Series by 2020. Okay. It's going to happen. No I mean, you're gonna that. you're gonna have a boatload of prospects to develop, and if you can develop them, then yeah, you're gonna have a good chance. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and also the weird thing was I didn't have some of these trades, so uh, I didn't have Dansby Swanson. I still had Shelby Miller. Okay. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to do, uh, first off, Eddie Collins, single up the middle. He's on first. Uh, what a jerk. I put up Freddie Freeman on the block. Okay. See what you could get. Braves probably should do it in real life because. Of course. They're obviously not going to keep him around in time for the real the real push. Uh, traded him to the Padres for Trey Turner, because that whole trade hadn't happened in this game. Oh, okay. Took Trey Turner, turned him around, sent him back to the Giants for Madison Bumgarner. Oh. <laughs> and Appling got it. He hit a single, and runners on first and second for Shoeless Joe Jacks. Uh, yeah, then hey, signed, signed David Price. I don't know how that okay. worked. That's hilarious. Yeah, why was he available? Oh, it, was it the offseason that we just had? Yeah, it's this offseason. Okay, that. okay. Uh, so I got David Price, signed Austin Jackson. You just bunt? No, grounded at first. Uh, runners move second and third. Canner go up. Uh, who else did I get? I made some. I was making moves. I signed Gavin Floyd because, I mean, who cares? I had such why, a yeah, load of pitching stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm absolutely terrified of the Braves third base slash left field positions list this year. Adonis Garcia and like Hector Olvera just like poop. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna hit 260. And so I have a question for you. Uh, I don't know what just happened. Canerco popped up. Uh, Good. The infield. Front of the second and third. Maglio up. Uh, you know when you say like 280 20, what do you call yeah. that 20 when it's like the combo of home runs and RBI and stolen bases? Is it like a special team mean, for that? No, like what I say, if if they had 10 of each, I would say 280 with a double-double. Mm-hmm. I call it a double-double because I, 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 that's taken from the basketball terminology, of course. Not from the in and out uh, hamburger ordering. Correct, correct, Which I because in and out is wildly overrated. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't have a naming convention if I say 280-20 and that's, that's you know, 12 home runs and eight stolen bases. I, I probably just have to say – or, or you just say 280 and, and 20 homers plus steals. Like, Eno and I have been saying that a lot as a little bit more of a shorthand because instead of trying to be so precise with it, we're trying to hit ballparks. You know, you'd like to get 25 homers and steals however you get them because a lot of times 
when you're going to draft a guy, you have this plan. You're like, I'm going to get 14 home runs and I'm going to get 18 steals. Well, what if you got 10 home runs and, and 30 steals? Would that would that be all right? Yeah, of course it would. It just it'd be a different valuation. So, uh, no, I don't have a shorthand for it, but it is something that I get a little bit more loose with instead of trying to uh, nail the projection and say, oh, it's gonna it has to be 14 homers. We should make up something for it. We should. If, do you have any ideas? Did you have an idea you wanted to pitch right now? I don't know. What was the one that I made up that I had the word for, but I didn't have a good what the stat was? I don't remember what it was. Uh, I don't remember either. Detroit goes down. Nothing happens in the first 0-0. Zero, zero. Hmm. Boo. Just the homers plus stolen bases, right? Yeah. I mean, HPS really kind of isn't funny. HPS. HPS. Homes, homers plus steals. Yeah, no, I got it. I'm mm. trying to think. What about, it could be hops, like homers, the H and the O. You know, you're using the O, the small O from, from homers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not great. It's not great. I, I, I admit that. I mean, herps, HRPS, <laughs> homers plus steals. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. I'd be going to <laughs> You got 40 herps, man. Dude, dude, put up 40 herps this year. What do you, you can't 40 herps. He had a great season. Get off his back with the 40 herps. Can't knock that. You can't knock a good 40 herps season. All right. Uh, Tiger's coming up in the bottom second. Still nothing happening. A little dinky For those ball. of you in the chat, you got any idea of a, of a good acronym for homers plus steals? You can switch them around, too. Homers don't have to come hmm. first. They just generally do if you're saying, like, uh, he had a 2020 season or a 10-20 season. That's homers steals, but you can flip it around if you've got a hilarious. <laughs> Fryman smoked one down the right field line. He's on first base. Now. Good. Okay, I'm a little bit. Obviously, I'm watching the stream, so I'm a little bit behind you saying it live. Hers. I don't like hers. Hers. Yeah, because then it just looks like you. Uh, it's like homers. Like. Yeah, you mistyped homers. Yeah. That's like putting the S at the end of RBIs. You're not a fan of that? Nah. And, and it's like, I, I don't know if I am because I, I catch myself and I'll erase it. See, I, same, same. <laughs> and sometimes I'll catch myself and I'll still leave it because it doesn't bother me that much. Mm -hmm. But I generally lean toward not doing it as well. I, 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 I try not to, but I hate when people get too over the top about it and, and say, you, don't you mean R's BI? And I'm yeah. like, okay, relax. Because it's supposed to be runs batted in, not runs yeah, batted in. It's like, I get it, but, you know, it's a little pedantic for, for people to be like, oh, come on, you can't say that. But, yeah, I'm with you. I, I try to go RBI. And it's, it's easy on Twitter because you want that you want that extra character. Exactly. That, that You're incentivized on Twitter. See, this is much more fun than me just reading what's going on. <laughs> We're through two. Nothing's I happened. wish the Tigers would, would, would get scoring here. Well, they have uh, Daryl Evans coming up, so he's got a 17-I. Verlander better keep his business together here and not start giving up hits against these clowns. I mean, it's a pretty good team. I know. It is an all-time team, after all. Uh, by the way, where's Frank? Why isn't he playing? Great question. Great yeah. question. See, he got an off day as well. Yeah, that must be it. Let me, uh, first off, we should double-check. Because uh, the guy at Cooperstown that does these, there have been some questionable choices. The Mariners did not have Edgar Martinez. Uh, excuse me? I, I don't know what happened. I don't know how that was possible. First off, Frank Thomas not listed as a first baseman. Uh, a designated hitter. They don't have it. I'm see. I'm thinking maybe he didn't have designated hitters in this lineup. In this thing somehow. Because Frank okay. Thomas is not here. Unless he's on the Blue Jays. Because I don't know if you've seen the Frank Thomas uh, commercial when he went to the Blue Jays. Where he I have it. hit a small child with a pillow. <laughs> it is and amazing. Did you send him flying? Yeah. <laughs> he hits him. The... The feathers go everywhere, and the kid goes flying into the wall. It's great. That is hilarious. I'm trying to find that right now, actually. Ty Cobb hits a bullet. Got a 15-game hitting streak. That sends uh, Daryl Evans to third base. Runner's on the corner for Charlie and Geringer. Geringer? Geringer. I like Geringer. Uh, yeah, I think Geringer is correct. See, it's good because uh, Adam, the... Uh, franchise hockey manager, uh, community manager. He never ever would want me to come over there and start uh, pronouncing hockey player names because they're <laughs> all amazing. 
Uh, bases loaded for Hank Greenberg. I feel something could happen. Only one out. Hopefully not a double play. And he hits him to a double play. Bam. Unbelievable. Yeah, it might be hard to try to find that, uh, I think. No, I already found it. I'm, found I'm it? watching it. I'll, 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 I'll post the link in a minute. It's a great commercial. <laughs> it's really funny. Zero, zero through three. All right, hang on one second, okay, TJ? Sure. One down for the White Sox on the top of the fourth. Conerco up. I like to call him Conorco, I think. He just had a jack to deep center field. Cobb's chasing it, and he's there to catch it. Right on the track. Unbelievable play by Ty Cobb. I think I see it. Is that a Budweiser logo? Best buy. Amazing. The, the stuff in the 3D view of these fields is amazing. Hard sinker on the ground ball to the left side. Fryman grabs it. Makes the throw to first for out number three of the inning. No hits, no runs, no errors. Go to the bottom of the fourth. Norm Cash. Cash money, cha-ching. Deep left over the scoreboard. That is going to give the Tigers a one-run lead. Unbelievable. 408 feet. Jack City, USA for Norm Cash. Hellman's going to hit a single up the middle. Fryman up. Remember, he hit that hard line drive in the uh, second inning? In the second inning, yeah. Better, better do something now. I see we're up 1-0. Yeah, Norm Cash hit a 408-foot jack over the score. Oh. That's awesome. Travis Fryman struck out, though. Oh, what a jerk. I don't think of Tony Phillips as left field, but maybe that's just me. Well, where do you think of him? Because the interesting thing is, of course, that he plays everywhere. I feel second. Okay, that, that is where I associate him, too. Like, when I first think of him, first off, I think of his dope uh, hitting uh, stance. Yeah, I think of his batting stance. But, but then I think of, of second base as well. But he was Ben Zobrist before Ben Zobrist was Ben Zobrist. He played 778 games at second, 565 in the left, 428 at third, 294 at short, 169 at right. 97 in center, even 101 in DH, and even five at first base just for good measure. Tony Phillips played everywhere. Wow. Uh, base is loaded for uh, Bill Freehan. One out. He's more of a defensive catcher, but let's see if he can get a base hit here. A looping fly ball to right. And it's going to fall in. Oh. How don't, don't, Phillips don't run on Maglio's arm. But he stops. Oh, Phillips trying. And he's going to score. Two-run single for uh, Freehan. So wait, you said earlier that this was a one to twenty scale, but I see that. Uh, yeah. Listen, that was that. Uh, okay. No, this is one to twenty scale, right? Well, I just saw that Maglio has a twenty-three arm. Hmm. So is it one to twenty-five? No, it's one to twenty. I don't know. Uh, I'd have. To, I don't know what I set this one for. Okay. I was just yeah, that was the default. But. Th that was the only thing I saw. It, doesn't matter. It's accurate, by the way. He probably did he have a, a bet. Yeah. He had a better arm than than was the max. See, Ty Cobb has a 26 contact there. Yeah, and he just hit a single to drive another run. Monster, and he probably spit on the umpire as he yeah. got to first. And he cleated the first baseman. Just cause. He definitely. <laughs> yeah. Even though it was Canerco and he was white, he just wanted to do it anyway. Charlie Geringer up. Tigers have a four zip lead here in the bottom of the fourth. Oh, awesome. I'll probably have to duck out soon, TJ. I won't be able to stay for the whole game, but this has been great. Sure, no problem. Uh, See, stupid freehand is blocking Cobb. Yep. He can't steal. Just let a double play happen, too. <laughs> uh, Ventura in to face Verlander here on the top of the fifth. Whoa! Ventura just went jack dad. Did he go monster? Oh, I yeah. can't wait to see it. I gotta, I gotta see it. 373. Looks like he hit it about 3,073 feet. <laughs> 4-1 Tigers in front. 1-1 one, one pitch. Oh, yeah, that was out in a hurry. Oh, I like that animation, by the way. That's good. Ooh, a little gapper. What kind of... Really what kind of do they have different parks that you can play in on uh, 17 or uh, same overlay? Whoa, whoa. First off, we can't talk about the Park 17 yet. Oh, pardon me. Pardon me. Soon. Okay, I wasn't Soon, sure. Maybe. I wasn't sure. I didn't, I didn't mean to go tread on, on territory that we couldn't talk about yet. 
Very soon. Very soon we'll be talking about Animal Crossing 17. Maybe I'll be back and we'll, and we'll, and we'll play some games on 17 or something. Uh, what just happened here? Zeke Bonora. That, that looks like a shot in the gap. Zeke Bonnaroo. Did shot. Bonnaroo. <laughs> I mean, Bonora. Yeah. Bonora, yeah. I, I like Bonnaroo. That's actually, that's actually a good name. Yeah. So, um, I, you probably know the answer to this. It's probably an easy question, and, and it, the answer is probably a yes. But could we be playing this? Like, if I had the 16 uh, up and running, could I be controlling Detroit against you playing uh, Chicago? And could we be on a stream? Can you play, like, games online? I'm going to say no. Just for Okay. Safety. Okay. Uh, we could be in a league together, and we can, like, sim through, the, sim through the weeks and see what happens. Yeah. But we could do something where... I'm like playing you kind of live. Not yet. No. Okay. Okay. Throw the. Oh yeah, I guess multiplayer fight and chunk had, had yeah, multiplayer is probably just the right way to ask that instead of the complicated, stupid way that if I asked. We both had this game at the same time in the same place. Uh, what could we do something? Bonnaroo just stole second. So. Bonnaroo's starting to bother me. Oh yeah, I meant to look him up. Hang on, because I literally never heard of that guy, and I've heard of a lot of baseball players. So for someone to oh never mind 1934 to 1940 I just hey man. my I don't know a ton about the the really old history. Well, you're but this years guy, old, so it's all right. Bonnaroo <laughs> was blasting. Speaking of blasty blast, Hank Greenberg just earned his nickname. The 436 was shot to dead center. Oh yes, dude. Seacott needs to uh, hit the showers. I think. He is up to... Oh, that was deep inches. center field. Yeah. He's getting Five. lit up right now. He's literally getting lit up. Norm Cash just roped the single to right. Yeah, 11 hits, and it, there are no outs in the fifth inning. That is lit up. You're 100% right. Oh, you know who's coming in? Keith Folk. Yes. <laughs> I love that he's on their roster. He was a monster closer. Look at that. He comes in. Gets a ground ball to third, to second for one, the relay to first, double play. What famous highlight is Keith Folk a part of? I'm assuming. It doesn't have anything to do with the White Sox. I'm assuming Keith Folk. Yeah, he's got the save in uh, 2004, right? There you go. For the Red Sox. Very nice work. Who, who was I th I was thinking Derek Lowe for a second, but I assume he uh, probably started that game. That, 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 that would have been a fair thing to, to think. Wow. Travis Fryman. He did Fryman not like yet? you talking bad about him early in this game. 381 <laughs> feet into the gap. And now he's two for three, two for three right? Yeah, and all, all balls hit quite hard. Well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, six, to, six to one for the uh, Tiger so far. Hey, you're going up to uh, Boston in a couple weeks, right? I am. I will be going to Boston actually two months from yesterday. <laughs> Uh, April 16th, I'm going to be doing a DFS boot camp. Really excited to do that. It's just going to be this, uh, you know, intense weekend event, kind of help folks play DraftKings and FanDuel stuff. And we're going to get to go to Fenway, which I'm really excited about. Nice. I went there 4th of July 2003, I want to say. We had a baseball uh, trip up there during the summer. How dope was it? It was amazing, especially on 4th of July. Uh, they had a f flag that covered the whole green monster. Oh, wow. Which was amazing. Uh, only problem was it was about 164 degrees, <laughs> and we were sitting in the bleachers. Uh, so we got we, – everybody on the team uh, bought pizzas, essentially so that we could sit on the pizza boxes because the seats were so hot. That is crazy and hilarious. And then uh, last year, uh, my wife and I went up there for a Garth Brooks concert uh, at – what is it? The Boston Garden? And we took a trip over to Fenway, did the Fenway Park tour and stuff. That was pretty awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, this is actually my first time to Boston, which I'm really excited about. I'm The only thing that I'm unexcited about for your trip is that it's not a week later. Because uh, we're probably Oh, would you going, be there? We're probably going up there for uh, PAX East at the Boston. Oh, Avengers man. Island. That would have been dope if, it, if they would have uh, overlapped. It's literally the next week, so. 
By the way, Try Hard Gaming asked about Jared Parker. Jared Parker was one of my favorites. I really thought he was going to become something special, like a number two starter type, and then two TJs, as you mentioned. It's it's an uphill battle, but he is coming back, and so I'm going to keep monitoring him. Right now, I don't have much info. haven't seen him pitch, but I'll be watching him in spring for sure. Even if he does come back this year, he's not going to make a big impact because he just won't be able to put together a lot of innings, but just getting on the field and pitching would be a big win for Jared Parker. Uh, he's still with the A's? Yeah. Where's yeah, my boy A.J. Griffin at? A.J. Griffin, that's one of, one of my favorite pickups of the year. Uh, the nastiest curveball in baseball that nobody It is, about. it is. And uh, p- people don't realize that in, unless you, you've seen it, you know, unless, you, unless you've seen it uh, uh, while you're watching a game. It is a filthy, filthy curveball. He got scooped by Texas, and I think that's a great Ooh, pick. Tough ballpark, you know, tougher ballpark than Oakland, but not, not the end of the world. Um, also fighting back from injury. I wanted my Tigers to take a shot there. Uh, I just think that's a great gamble. We're still only talking about a 28-year-old. Griffin has a really good chance to make some noise. Wow. Having him and Darvish with their curveballs on the same team? Good luck. <laughs> That's pretty good nasty. Stinking luck. Ventura hit a double, but there's still two outs. By the way, don't forget about Cole Hamels' curveball. So you got those three guys with their curveballs that you, you know, by the midsummer, if everything like really worked out well for Griffin, you could be facing those three in a row. Hamels, Darvish, Griffin. <laughs> if you're a bad curveball hitter, you're going like 0 for 9. Griffin had Tommy John surgery? Yeah, they it's both got Tommy John, Griffin, and Parker uh, in the span of about a week. It was a nightmarish week for Oakland that year. Uh, Minosa drove in Ventura. 6-2 Detroit. Uh, it's funny, actually, my friend uh, Jeff, who was on last week's stream, uh, did a great piece on... The deal with the devil the Braves made in the 90s. Which have, one was that? To have that great run of uh, division championships. And then, uh, literally, and then literally everybody on their team needed Tommy John surgery. Oh, yeah. And multiple oh, yeah. guys multiple times. No, it, it's – I mean, it was a different uh, era back then, obviously, in terms of, you know, pitcher management. But, uh, you know, they ran Steve Avery into the ground mm-hmm. – and but I, I I hate to say that as if he wasn't a willing participant. It's not like he was like, I got to get out. And and they said no 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 you pitch. But you know two back to back two hundred and thirty and two hundred and twenty inning seasons. That was just in the regular season. Plus he was adding on another ten to fifteen in the playoffs. So those were some big workloads. And then after age twenty four, he never threw more than one hundred and seventy innings in a season. Mm-hmm. I feel like they had a lot of those guys. A lot of those fourth and fifth guys after uh, Maddox, Smoltz, and Glavin. Yep. Just, you just had. That's the thing, though. You could just run in. They could have put me and you in there, mm-hmm. and and they'd have had a chance with those three leading the rotation. Then Kent Merker bombed after. He started off pretty great for him too. Mark Woolers. Ugh, don't talk to him, Mark Woolers. As a reliever, relievers do fizzle out. So it's again not blaming them for that. He but threw Merker one pitch is, and fizzled his whole career. Oh, yeah. Why do you throw a slider? Your third oh. best pitch. You know, another one, uh, Jason Schmidt. Uh, they they thought that they burned him out, but uh, then he got traded, and he ended up having that big renaissance with San Francisco. Mm-hmm. That was a huge one for them. Usually, if they're trading a pitcher, Atlanta, you want to be weary of that. But the example that runs counter to that is uh, Adam Wainwright. Mm-hmm. You know, they traded him, and people were like, ooh, that might be a, a the death knell, the, the warning sign. And it turned out they missed on that one because, obviously, he's been amazing. Yeah. And that was like – that trade was the start of the downhill progression of that yep. pitching staff. Uh, where are we? We are 6-2, bottom of the eighth. Travis Fryman up 2-3 for three to make that 3-4. Three, uh, three for four. Dude's a monster. I'll go ahead. <laughs> stick out till the end of the game then since we're already in the in the eighth yeah at the top of the hour uh, we're gonna hand it off to adam and the franchise hockey manager stream very so, nice so we got to try to wrap this up but travis Fryman keeps getting hit so yeah it's making the game take longer i feel like i feel like every tony phillips card had him in an interesting batting stance it did it did base is loaded for daryl evans Tony Phillips is batting 214 with runners in scoring position in this current season. That's brutal. Most guys hit better with runners in scoring position. 
Uh, base hit for Evans. 7-2 Tigers. Base is still loaded. Can, 16 hits. Can freehand do it again. Sergio Santos. I remember him. Oh, Sergio Santos is in the game. Yeah. He's not... That's not long ago, right? Mm-hmm. Was he with He was Blue somebody Jays? who was... Yeah, Blue Jays, not, now he's knocking around. Uh, he's the guy now who's bouncing around everywhere because he can't stay healthy. Uh, tell you, uh, blah, blah, blah. White Sox roll a double play. 8-2. Another run comes in. 8-2 Tigers. Matt Thornton. Verlander. Gets the, uh, Is Verlander going for the complete game after this? Uh, I think so. I don't Tig think he's been subbed out. Tigers push through. Push two through. Yeah, Verlander's still in there. Only at 95 pitches. So. Oh, yeah. It's gonna, he could get a Maddox but he's if, he, if he gets out of here in four pitches. He's got Canarco, Ordonez, and Ventura. Okay, that'll be tough. Top of the ninth. It's going to be a little tough for him. No defensive replacements. Oh, no. Uh, v. Wirtz into right field. Vic Wirtz, yeah. Beast right fielder. Canerco, single up the box. Uh-oh. It's his 100th hit of the season. Get Todd Jones. I'm just kidding. I hope Todd Jones isn't on our all-time team. I wonder, I wonder who the closer is. Uh, Willie Hernandez. He won an MVP and a Cy Young. Mm. Or Mike Henneman. He was a beast when I was a kid. It's got to be one of those two. Or both. Uh, Maglio, I guess Maglio got a single. Oh, Ventura. Ventura Kays. From Verlander's third strike out of the game. So Ch Fighting Chunk thinks the uh, Cleveland's going to be first, Chicago will be second, and the Tigers will be third in this AL Central. You know, it's going to be a really tight division, so I can't really disagree with any order that people make up because all five teams, I think, are going to be competing. I mean, he didn't even mention KC yet, and, uh, you know, obviously they're the reigning champs. So that AL Central is going to be a beast. The Tigers used to feast on it because it was such a bad division. Now it could be the best in the league, uh, in the American League. I think the NL Central is still the best overall. And Verlander gets the double play to get out of the game. Hot. 120 pitches. Big W. 83 strikes. Look at Fryman and Cash and Evans all popping three hits. Yeah. Wow. Nobody uh, really did anything. Robin Ventura was the only one. Two four with two runs. Well, Verlander got his ERA back under four, thankfully. Big flies by Hank Greenberg, Fryman, and Cash, and Ventura. Not a bad game. Uh, Paul, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, TJ. Uh, they can follow you on Twitter at Sporer, S-P-O-R-E-R. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure you subscribe to the Sleeper and the Bust podcast on iTunes and rate and review it. It's a great show. Definitely do that. Uh, appreciate that as well. What else do we say? Rotowire? Rotowire. You can find me there. Fangraphs. Uh, Snapchat. P. Sporer. Absolutely check that out. If you want to hear someone listening to a Canadian talk about baseball, that's why you sign up for Paul's where, Snapchat. Where else are you finding that exactly? <laughs> and if you want to see my dog. Don't worry, dude. I'll get to your DM uh, in a little bit. i got to go get some dinner. Um, all right, TJ. Thanks for having me on, man. Thank you. And thank you guys for all tuning in. Appreciate that very much. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter, at uh, OOTP Baseball. Uh, make sure you check out uh, – sub the channel here, at uh, OOTP Developments on Twitch. Uh, YouTube.com slash OOTP Developments, Facebook.com slash OOTP Baseball, all those great places. Sign up for the newsletter. We have Out of the Park 17 info coming in hot very soon. Uh, so you want to get the first – you want to be the first person to know about that. You're going to get that on the newsletter. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching. Franchise Hockey Manager at the top of the hour, which we've already passed. So they'll be on in a second. Uh, thank you again, Paul. Thank you again, everybody, for watching. Uh, thank see you. See you next week.